Hey, good morning, everybody. It's uh, good to have you back with us for morning devotions. Uh, we're back in the book of Acts this morning, and hopefully you guys are doing well. Um, hopefully you had a great weekend, got to spend some time with your family, and uh, had a great time in worship yesterday. We started a brand new message series yesterday called uh, Uncommon Generosity, where we looked at the idea that uh, God has been exceedingly generous to us in the way he blesses us and cares for us, and we are um, going to continue that series over the next couple of weeks leading up to Christmas as we see that God did some uncommon things for the people in the first century, especially in light of, um, uh, well, not in light, in the context of what God did for uh, some people that normally wouldn't have been used. Uh, we talked yesterday about how God used Mary and Joseph, an inexperienced couple. We looked at the idea that God used the city of Bethlehem. No one would have thought that was possible. And he even uh, made the first messengers of the word of God, the gospel, um, out of shepherds. And uh, so we talked about all that stuff. We'll continue that theme um, and what God is maybe calling us to do in our world uh, next Sunday as well. So anyway, it was great having you guys with us yesterday. And hopefully you were encouraged by that. Um, I'm on the road today, uh, so I am uh, just wanted to bring uh, just a, a quick note from the scripture here this morning. We're going to be in the book of Acts chapter 10. And so just to give you an idea of Acts chapter 10, let me give you a little background in the context here of Acts 10. So the church had begun um, after Jesus ascended into heaven, and the church was flourishing and doing really well. We know that uh, many people were coming to know Jesus. I mean, uh, the scripture in a couple different places in the book of Acts tells us that thousands daily were coming to know Jesus. And so the church grew rapidly. Um, uh, some Sometime later, we see that Stephen was stoned to death. After Stephen, a disciple of Jesus, was stoned, we see that there was persecution that broke out against the church. And the church just uh, had to move out of Jerusalem, which was a God thing, uh, that God used that. Uh, hardship to advance the kingdom. And so people went all over the place and, and made disciples where they traveled to. They set up new homes and businesses and the, the church expanded into all these different regions. But primarily, what we see is that primarily, this was still a church, uh, a group of Christians that was primarily um, Jewish in nature. Uh, this was only Jewish people who had made the decision to follow Jesus. They had not begun to preach the gospel to the Gentiles. And so in the first century, uh, there was a lot of what we would call racism. There was a lot of tension. There was a lot of um, animosity toward people who were not of true Jewish descent. Uh, so that might have been Samaritans that the Jews could not stand. It might have been um, not just the... the uh, Jews uh, hating the Samaritans, but like Jews and Gentiles and all of those things. So we see that all throughout uh, the New Testament. And it happened still in the church where there was still this tension, almost as if some of the Jews did not think that Gentiles should be allowed to accept the word of God and become followers of Christ. So with that in mind, uh, we see that the, uh, the context here in, in Acts chapter 10 where there was a man by the name of Cornelius, a gentle, a Gentile man, um, who the Bible describes in chapter 10 as a devoted follower of God. Um, God allows him to see this vision um, where an angel presents to him a command. The command was for him to reach out to Peter, uh, who was nearby, and um, ask Peter to come. And actually, Cornelius doesn't even know the full extent of what this is all about. Um, the Bible tells us that God goes to, um, that God comes to Peter at the same time and informs Peter that there are going to be some men coming to see him and that Peter needs to go with him because God has a special divine appointment for him to meet this man Cornelius and to preach the gospel and all that kind of stuff. Um, the interesting part about this is that when God comes to Peter, God comes to Peter in a vision and he gives him a vision in chapter 10 of this sheet being uh, lowered down from heaven and it was all kind of animals on it. And God tells, um, he, he tells Peter to get up, kill and eat, meaning eat these animals. And there were all kinds of different animals. Uh, some of them were uh, clean animals. 
uh, as what we know in the Bible, and there were some unclean animals. Uh, in the Jewish culture, they had certain animals that were clean and were permissible to eat, and others that were not permissible to eat. Um, they, in the Jewish culture, I mean, did not eat pork, um, did not eat fish that had uh, no scales on them, no shellfish, things of that nature. There were, there were numerous things that they did not eat because of God's command. Part of that was hygienic, part of that was cultural, um, but regardless of that, that was the that was the context in which Peter grew up, and so Peter says to the Lord in this dream in his vision, he says, "Lord, I've I've never eaten anything unclean," um, and God says, "No, you get up and do this," and God says, "Don't ever call something unclean that I have called clean." Now, a lot of people would take this as uh, an indication of that we can eat whatever we want. The, the concept here, though, is that this was not primarily a physical thing in terms of what we eat or what we don't eat. This was God saying to Peter, I know that you have been raised to think that Gentiles do not need or desire the word of God. I know, Peter, that you've lived in this context in your life where you think the gospel is only for the Jews and that God, that the Christ only came for the Jews. But I want you to know that the gospel is for all mankind. Um, that echoes the, the Christmas story, right? Whenever the angels came to the shepherds in the wilderness and they said to the shepherds in the wilderness, uh, I bring you uh, great news today that will be of great joy for all the people. Not not just Jewish people, not just uh, God's nation of Israel, not just them, but for all people, it will be a great, uh, it'll be great joy for them and great news to them. So the gospel is for all mankind. So we see Peter uh, listen to God's message. He goes with these uh, individuals back to Cornelius's house. When Peter gets to Cornelius's house, he recognizes, man, this guy Cornelius is the real deal. He loves the Lord. He is passionate about following the Lord. And so Peter begins to explain to these Gentiles in this house um, the plan that God had for redeeming the world. So he explains about who Jesus is, and what Jesus suffered and how Jesus died for us and he rose from the dead and what that means for us to find salvation in him. And um, and the believers, uh, the, the people there in Cornelius' household, all say um, yes to God. They all make the decision to follow Jesus. Actually, something we'll talk about a little bit tomorrow is um, that's interesting is that as Peter was speaking to them, the Holy Spirit came on those who were in Cornelius' house and they began to speak in tongues and they began to do these, uh, give evidence that the Holy Spirit was upon them. And Peter says, what pre pre prevents these people from being baptized, right? Who To give their life to Jesus, that obviously the Spirit of God was on them. And so I love that dynamic of, of what we learn here that, man, the gospel is for all mankind. It is not just for people who have their act together. Uh, that the gospel is not just for people who, um, it's not just for people who uh, live in a certain area of the world or are privileged in certain ways. It is for all of mankind that Jesus in his death and his resurrection paved the way for our salvation, but not just ours, but for the salvation of the world and those who would belong to him. And so I just want to encourage you to think about that. Who has maybe God positioned you around? Uh, maybe in your workplace, maybe in your school, maybe in your neighborhood, maybe even in your family, that you need to make sure that you make a priority to say to them that God loves them and he has made a way for them to have their sins forgiven, that we would share the gospel. This story in Acts chapter 10 is the first indication of the gospel being preached and accepted by someone uh, outside of the Jewish faith. Um, and uh, we see that in the household of Cornelius. Uh, next, no, tomorrow in chapter 11, we'll see this picture here of how the church responds to that and how it was a learning curve for them to say that it was okay for Gentiles to do that. They were overcoming that. Um, they were overcoming that racism even in the first century. And um, it took someone spearheading and showing that, listen, this is a good thing that the word of God is preached to all mankind. So, Think about who you can influence. Think about who you need to share the good news with. Think about how you might be a blessing to someone else in your life um, as you live out for God's glory. So let's pray and then we'll, then we'll uh, get going. God, thank you that you love us so much. And we thank you for your grace and the, the purpose that you've given to us in life. We thank you, God, for your favor and sending Jesus to us. 
Thank you for the example of Peter, that Peter, even though it was something outside of his comfort zone to go to the house of a Gentile, that he was uh, probably stressed about that and uncomfortable, God, he was willing to say yes. And I pray that that would be the same thing for us, that when you present us with opportunities to tell the good news to other people, we will not shy away from that because we're uncomfortable or we could, because we're nervous or because of any other excuse we might come up with. But God, we would say yes, and we would sit back and watch you work through us and among us. We love you, God. Help us to be faithful to you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Hey, we hope you have a, a wonderful day today. Be a blessing to someone else, and we will uh, see you tomorrow morning, 9 a.m. God bless.